Welcome Game Chasers Everywhere to episode 28 of the Collecting Confidant with your host Gunstar Hero and I'm back this week with something very interesting and unique, a reverse horror experience that I originally picked up physically on the Switch a couple years back via Special Reserve Games. This would of course be Carry On, which was developed by Phobia Game Studios and published by Devolver Digital and is now getting a physical release on the PS4 via LimitedRunGames.com and is now open for pre-order until Sunday, October the 16th, 2022 at the standard limited run deadline of 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And of course, if you did miss out on the Switch version of this from Special Reserve Games, you can actually still get this via physical retail release from Amazon.com for the same price of $29.99 US, which is the PS4 price. We're going to get a little bit more into those additions and pricing afterwards, but first, let's talk about the game and why you should consider this if you are a horror fan and also a fan of the Metroidvania genre, which this game tries to turn on its head in some very interesting and unique ways. So, I did finish the entire game plus the DLC in, in preparation for this video. The game itself, like I said, is a reverse horror experience done in a Metroidvania type of genre. You play as an amorphous tentacled red monster with no known origin and essentially right from the beginning of the game there's no intro you just break out of your containment facility and start to wreak havoc on any life forms you encounter from scientists to security guards in the wealth research facility which you've been contained in and now are trying to seek an escape from and essentially that's the whole point of the game you're just going to keep evolving growing larger and larger in size getting new abilities until you finally find your way out of this lab as you do that you are going to evolve as you work through this game and what's interesting about it is the traversal is very unique for a metroidvania in terms of the fact that it's fast furious and defies complete and utter gravity so i was actually watching an interview with one of the co-developers of phobia game studio by the name of christoph chomicki and what he said was that when they approached this from the metroidvania genre one of the things that you typically encounter in a metroidvania especially when you're first starting out the game is you'll typically see platforms or areas that might be a little too high to reach right you know that over the game you're eventually going to grow evolve and unlock abilities that will eventually get you to these areas whereas in this game they wanted to start you off with being able to traverse anywhere because this amorphous monster can cling to walls, climb as high as it wants to. So traversal is not an issue with this. It's fast and furious, but the only places you're really going to get stopped is if, for example, you need to say open a wall or a door to get into a new aqueduct or a pipe or a sewer entrance, or maybe you're going to encounter some human resistance. And then that's where you're going to get started breaking into the combat defensive and stealth modes of the gameplay so as you're traversing through this giant research facility and here's the thing there's not going to be a map to aid you in your quest there's no quest log or anything it's just you and the game in your brain trying to figure out a way out you are going to evolve over time so what's going to happen you're going to first of all find these containment canisters that contain pieces of your genetic makeup that were originally separated from you when you were originally contained. So the scientists, in order to study your body mass and also contain you, separated you into all these different areas of the research lab. So now your whole point is to find and reclaim these pieces to get back all of your abilities and your body mass because the way this game is work structurally is that you have three body mass classes, okay? So you start out as a very small monster, but then as you grow, you go to a medium size and then a large size, but each of these three different sizes has very unique offensive and defensive capabilities attached to them. There is a lot of puzzle solving in this game like any good Metroidvania, so there are going to be instances where you might be the wrong body mass size for a certain type of puzzle. So to assist in that, you'll be able to find these pools where you can either drop your body mass or reclaim it so that you can get to a certain type of size with certain types of abilities to progress to the next part of the game. Now, even though you are this giant, ruthless, terrifying monster and you're raining destruction and honestly, when you find your human targets and start ripping their limbs apart and hearing the bones crunching and the terrified screams and gurgles, I'll be honest, you actually start to feel a little sorry for the humans as you know that they're going to meet their demise and you're approaching them. But 
these humans can also be a threat to you as well because there are security forces. There's also booby traps and bombs, but then good old fashioned guns and flamethrowers from the human resistance that will tear you apart. And you are delicate and fragile and you can die. Fortunately, you are able to create save points throughout the facility by finding these unique corners and spreading your biomass so that you can regenerate every time you die or when you're running low on health, you can find one of these save points and regenerate so that you can go and try the run again. So there's definitely some difficulty. You're not just like this all powerful force that can't be stopped. You do have a lot of resistance and you're gonna have to play with some stealth abilities and some puzzle solving and some quick thinking to get around some of these obstacles. But overall, the controls are really tight, very good, and it just feels very intuitive to move around and use your combat and defensive abilities. So I like that part of the game. The only thing I will say that is kind of a hindrance to the game is the fact that because you are this ruthless, brainless monster who is just intent on eating and destroying everything in its path, there's really not going to be a lot of exposition and narrative associated with this. There is definitely some narrative that you can unlock per se. So at certain points in the game, you will be able to insert yourself into these material analyzer pods where once you do that, you'll know visually that you're entering a flashback sequence because now there'll be like this scaly filter that's applied to the screen suggesting that you've gone back in time. And what happens every time you do this, you will then be able to play as the original scientists of the facility that created you in the first place. So this is kind of nice from a storytelling standpoint where now you can get a bit more of a backstory on how you came to be and what happened with this facility. But the only thing I will say is that this was kind of a missed opportunity in the sense that I wish we could have seen more of this other side of the gameplay where you play as the human beings and get a bit more of a history. You do get some glimpses from time to time, but overall playing as the monster takes up the majority of the gameplay experience. And from that standpoint, even though there are a lot of abilities to unlock, by the end of the game, I will say that the gameplay tends to get a little repetitive, not to say that it's not fun. It's definitely satisfying. The physics are fantastic. It really feels good to play. And the game overall isn't very long. It doesn't overstay its welcome. You can beat this game, according to the developer, in about, I'd say, five to eight hours. I'd say that's about right. It took me about overall 10 hours to beat this and then the DLC that's included with the game as well. So definitely not a very long game. I think if it had been any longer, it would have gotten really repetitive. But overall, it's pretty good for what it is. And even though I have some minor gripes with that and the fact that there is no map, I will say there are a lot of biomes in this game that are connected within the research facility. And the fact is that traversal can get a little confusing from time to time without the aid of a map. I get it. You're a monster. You don't really have access to these things. But from a quality of life perspective, if they were to make a sequel to this, I'd like to see just a little bit more guidance so that it doesn't get frustrating. But even then, with those minor gripes, this is a very fun game and very satisfying. If you just want to go cause some destruction and even have kind of a nervous laugh, because I will say, when you go and destroy these humans, rip them from limb to limb, you'll see half their body flailing around like a pair of legs or a torso, and you'll eat these with all your multiple mouths. There's something kind of mischievous and darkly funny about this that I can't deny, but overall, again, you will feel bad for these humans, even though you know you have to crush them to get to the end game. There's definitely some empathy there. Okay, so the game itself, is a cool spin on the Metroidvania genre. It did start out originally in development as early as October 2017, according to co-developer Sebastian Kroshkowicz. About a year later, they showed off some early footage at the GDC conference, the Game Developers Conference, and then finally, in October 2019, the developers, Phobia Game Studio, released the first demo of this game on Steam. And this demo was originally just a vertical slice giving an idea of what the game would intend to be. And what's nice about this is when you actually do beat the base game, you can unlock the original demo and see how far this game came from original concept to execution. And I will say it's interesting because the demo, you know, the AI of the humans is a little dumber. They're not as aggressive. The physics are a little different. So it is cool from a historical perspective to see how much the game evolved. Also, if you buy the PS4 version on limited run or the new retail Switch version via Amazon, these will include the free DLC that came out at the end of 2020 called The Greatest Time of the Year. This is a 
free Christmas themed DLC where you get to play in a one single biome. It's about a 20 to 30 minute experience with Christmas lights everywhere and decorations. And just again, darkly funny, the fact that it's a Christmas themed DLC, but you're still causing destruction and paranoia and all that fun stuff. So definitely worth a hoot. And like I said, the fact that it's not a very long game, even though it gets a little bit repetitive, it still feels good for its overall length and content. Now, one final thing to say about the game's development, of course, in terms of inspirations, the creature design itself was heavily inspired by John Carpenter's 1982 film, The Things. So you'll definitely see that influence there. Also, Predator and the movies Aliens, those definitely presented some of an inspiration as well. But from a gameplay perspective, one of the co-developers, Christoph Shomiki, did admit that their main inspiration were the old Alien vs. Predator games, where again, it had a unique spin on being able to control the monster with the Marines being afraid of you. And that was the concept they wanted to do with Carry On. They wanted to imagine what would it be like if you're the monster and all the humans are afraid of you, and that's where they came up with with this so I see a lot of promise from this very small team of three people they were able to pull off something very unique and incredible and I do see a lot of potential for either potential sequel where they can maybe clean up some of the issues with the first game do something a bit more fleshed out in terms of story and going back and forth between the human and the monster in terms of gameplay mechanics I like what I see here and I'm excited to see what they do in the future now one last thing to say about the game is the soundtrack, which is moody, perfectly suited to a horror game, and was done by Chris Velasco, better known as the composer for monumental games like Bloodborne, God of War 1, 2, and 3, Borderlands, so you'll definitely feel the good musical vibes in this game all over the place. Lots to be excited for. Now, let's talk about the physical versions before we wrap up the video. So, of course, I did mention before that the PS4 version is now available for physical pre-order via limitedrungames.com until Sunday, October 16th, 2022 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can get both the standard version for $29.99 US or the VHS edition, which comes with an actual VHS big box, a clamshell, a CD soundtrack and a poster and that one goes for $64.99 US but of course if you prefer to get this on the Switch you can't get it anymore via special reserve games like I did but you know what this game is actually incomplete because this does not include the greatest time of the year DLC so if you do want to get that DLC and the complete version on a cart you can go to amazon.com and get the standard version for $29.99 US while supplies last so, again, if you are a fan of Metroidvania and you want a bit of a unique spin on the genre and being able to play as the enemy rather than as the hero this time, and essentially just have like a gory, bone-crunching good time, especially in light of the fact that Halloween's coming up, I'd say it's appropriate for this time of year. So definitely a very unique experience with just a few minor gripes, but don't let that detract you from the fun factor. It's definitely a rip-roaring, bloody good time. You've been watching the 28th episode of The Collecting Confidant with your host, Gunstar Hero. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Later, game chasers, and peace.